you will find the hymn numbers listed in your bulletin. So those are the hymn numbers to pay attention to throughout the service. We welcome today Justin Stevens at our organ. Thank you so much, Justin, for filling in on uh, while Joanne Edstrom is away. And so our opening hymn today, am I correct, uh, Justin, that it is 555? Yeah. All right, we're on, now we're on the same page, <laughs> literally. <laughs> side of the church is quite full. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and being with us today. Our celebration begins in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our word from sacred scripture. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. They, make, they plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Psalm 82, by half verse, dividing at the asterisk, we'll respond. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He is judged in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly? And show favor to the wicked. Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods. And all your children are most high. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals. And fall like immigrants. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. A reading from from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of Samuel and David and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. 
They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended by the, for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded so great of a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that has been set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, It is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, There will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. Why do you not know? how to interpret the present time. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. What a gorgeous day. This is why we live in the Black Hills in August, because it feels so good outside. I'm so grateful for you taking time out of your Sunday a day of respite and rest and being with us to worship and to pray. 
Yesterday, we were coming back from a brief hike uh, over in Mystic, just on the other side of Hill City. And as we were coming back, the sun was shining brightly, and it was also raining at the same time. Now, ever since I was a kid, I always thought that was a strange sight to see the rain and the sunshine all at the same time. It always felt like kind of a contradiction to me. It's almost like it needs to be one or the other, right? How can it be both? Can you have sunlight and, and rain? Well, what I've come to realize as I've gotten deeper into the spiritual life is that Christianity is filled with such contradictions and paradoxes. And I still find myself struggling a little bit with some of that tension inside of myself. Today's readings, for example, are, are a perfect example, in fact, for the kind of contradiction and paradox that I'm talking about. Now, I'm going to share some passages from Scripture with you to kind of set the scene. Uh, these are not necessarily passages that we had in our readings today. Um, but note that the passages I share with you all come from the Gospel of Luke, which is where today's Gospel passage does, in fact, come from. In Luke chapter 1, verse 79, it's part of what's called the Canticle of Zechariah. Zechariah is John the Baptist's dad. And so John the Baptist's dad, Zechariah, is announcing that John will foretell the coming of the Messiah, of the Savior. And the end of the Canticle of Zechariah, uh, Zechariah says that the Messiah is coming who will shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. In Luke chapter 2, verse 14, some shepherds are in a field tending the flock. A baby has been born in Bethlehem. And some angels show up to those shepherds. And they say, the angels say, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Luke chapter 2, verse 29. Simeon, a guy who has been stuck in the temple waiting for the coming of the Messiah, finally sees Mary and Joseph walk in with the baby Jesus for the presentation of Jesus. And Simeon recognizes immediately that this baby is the Messiah. And Simeon says, Now, Master. You may let your servant go in peace according to your word. Later in Luke's gospel, chapter 7, verse 50, the sinful woman washes Jesus' feet with her tears and dries them with her hair and perfumes and oils his feet. Jesus forgives her by saying, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. In Luke chapter 8, verse 48, the woman with the hemorrhage. Years and years she's had this hemorrhage. She says, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I can be healed. She touches the hem of his garment. Power flows out of Jesus. He realizes it, turns, has an interaction with the woman. And he says to her, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. In Luke chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, Jesus sends his disciples out. And he says, when you go into a town and a village, when you go into a home, wish peace upon it. If peace is returned to you, stay there. If you do not get peace returned to you, then shake the dust from that town and that village and go away. Get out of there. And finally, in Luke chapter 24, verse 36, after Jesus' resurrection, he appears to his disciples and says to them, Peace be with you. According to these scripture passages, Jesus is the Lord and the arbiter of peace. But our gospel passage today from St. Luke says rather clearly something a little different. Jesus says, do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. This, be. this is the kind of conflict and paradox that I struggle with. Jesus even says that families will be divided, citing examples by, start, by uh, starting off with uh, father against son and son against father. And he's actually quoting the book of the prophet Micah. But even that contradicts Luke chapter 1 verse 17, which says of John the Baptist. John the Baptist will go before the Messiah in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers 
towards his children. Jesus will turn the hearts of fathers toward his children. How can Luke then, at the beginning of the gospel, predict that fathers will turn their hearts to their children, while later in Luke, Jesus says his very presence will split fathers and sons? The key to this riddle, if you want to call it that, is in our acceptance of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. The people that Jesus sent away in peace, in the examples that I offered, are all people who believe Jesus to be the Lord, the Messiah, the Savior. It's when the message of Jesus Christ is ignored, or when Jesus' Messiahship is denied, that division and lack of peace enters into the world and enters into a person's soul. It's when people do not believe in Jesus Christ, even more specifically. It's when people do not live in accord with the tenets of Christ's example. That's when peace is destroyed and division enters the world. Christians have an enormous amount of power to bring peace to the world. The power of Christ in God is so strong that if we believe and then practice what we believe, peace will reign. The letter to the Hebrews today gives an example of heroes from the Old Testament. These are people who did not even have the good news of Jesus Christ yet, but through their belief and faith in God, their trust in God, they were able to accomplish a multitude of miraculous things. It says, through faith, through faith, they conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, and put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. The writer then concludes this section by saying, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that is, all these people that have just been mentioned and from the Old Testament, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also set aside every weight and the sin that clings to us so closely, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame. In the example of Jesus Christ, we see that we Christians are not immune from problems, trials, or hardships, but adherence to the message of Jesus Christ gives us hope and joy and peace. Now, I intentionally skipped over an important part of today's gospel section. At the very beginning, it says, Jesus says, I came to bring fire to the earth. In today's first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the Lord says, is not my word like fire? Jesus says, I came to bring fire to the earth. And Jeremiah's Lord says, is not my word like fire? Now, fire is a purifying element. Fire burns off imperfections and impurities. Throughout scripture, we hear Jesus speak of those who do not bear fruit, or those who are chaff, separated from the wheat, who will eventually be thrown into the fire. That, of course, is an image that conjures up, well, it's an image of punishment. But the image of fire is also used by John the Baptist, who says that he, John, baptizes with water, while the one whose sandal he is not worthy to fasten will baptize with fire and the Holy Spirit. In Acts of the Apostles, also written by Luke, by the way, the Holy Spirit is repeatedly compared to an image of fire, especially as the Holy Spirit descends upon the apostles. And even back in the Old Testament, we see the image of fire when God appears to Moses in the burning bush. And in Deuteronomy chapter 4, God's love is described as being like a consuming fire. This fire that Jesus Christ speaks, speaks about descends upon each and every one of us at the moment of our baptism. 
Isn't it interesting that water, which usually extinguishes fire, is the vehicle that God uses to set our hearts and souls on fire? See the contradiction in the paradox? Please say yes. yes. The water of baptism sets our hearts and our souls on fire. Jesus, in fact, speaks about baptism in today's gospel when he says, I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under, what stress I am under until it's completed. Now, Jesus, he had already been baptized by his cousin John. Now, Jesus didn't need to be baptized. He got baptized for us to purify or to bless the waters of baptism, okay? So Jesus didn't need baptism, but we do. And he gives us that gift by being baptized himself. But, but here in this context, Jesus is not talking about the kind of baptism that is sacramental in our church. Rather, he's talking about his upcoming crucifixion. Jesus is talking about something... Uh, the baptism in the sense of being completely immersed or submerged in an experience. And that, for him, was to be his crucifixion. At this point in Luke's gospel story, where we are today, Jesus was on his way towards his crucifixion. Now, through our own baptism, we are immersed with Christ into his life, including being immersed into his crucifixion and his death. And as a result, therefore, are immersed in Jesus' resurrection. <clears throat> At our baptism, our hearts and our souls are set afire. We become followers of Jesus. We become members of the Jesus movement. When we become followers of Jesus, we are filled with peace, joy, and love. When we are filled with peace, joy, and love, we do not play into the hands of the false prophets of the world who declare that they have the message of truth, the message of consumerism, the message of looking out for number one, the message of destroying the other guy before he destroys you. We do not adhere to those messages when we are followers of Jesus Christ. And if the false prophets reside in our own families, then yes, there will be division in that family. Because being a follower of Jesus means that our loyalty to Christ must come first. Let me say that again. Our loyalty to Jesus Christ must come first. We must follow Jesus over and above even our own family members who might be on a wayward path. Are we going to follow Jesus? Or are we going to follow the lost sheep? Even if we're related to them. That's where the division will occur. Now the scary part is that there are false prophets who use the name of Jesus Christ to promote their distorted sense of his message or to justify their own position. And unfortunately, some of these false prophets are related to us. So what are we going to do? Who am I going to follow? In our readings today, we see these paradoxes clearly. Water sets fire. Peace divides. And families, which are supposed to be united, are oftentimes torn apart. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if we want to grow in the spiritual life with Jesus Christ, we must get comfortable with these kinds of contradictions and paradoxes. And you'll know that you're successful when you come to realize and embrace the ultimate paradox that when your time on earth comes to an end, that is, when you die, you will actually live forever in peace. Amen.
Turning to page 358, let us bring peace to the world by being rebellious against it, as we stand to say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, who suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn to page 188, I'm sorry, 388, 388 for Forum 4 of the Prayers of the People. Let us pray for Christ's church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Remember before God this morning, Jonathan Daniels, a martyr in our own country not many years ago, whose ministry is so needed today. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We continue to pray, O Lord, for our brothers and sisters at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church as they seek a priest and rector. We ask, Lord God, that you send them a faithful servant. Hear and answer their prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Especially remembering all those listed in our bulletin this morning and those who have asked us individually for prayers. Let us pray also for those who are traveling home today from the Sturgis rally, that they may travel in safety and with a sense of God's presence. 
We ask for your prayers also for our family and friends in Baton Rouge who are suffering under the weight of the flooding that is taking place there, especially Caroline and Meredith's dad, Scott, whose house we believe to be flooded at this time. He is here visiting with us um, for my mother and father-in-law, for their properties, for all those who have had to evacuate and are worried, fearful, and concerned. Lord God, in your mighty power, may the waters recede according to your eternal promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Please hurry, O Lord, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy and peace behold your Son at, at his coming in glorious majesty. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning back to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to any and all visitors and guests who may be with us this morning. We're delighted that you're here. Immediately following our service in the parish hall, we will have some treats and some coffee and things like that. So I do hope that you'll come, all of you will come and join us and be a part of that fellowship opportunity. If you missed it last weekend, we announced that we will be doing our United Thank Offering, that's U-T-O, collection, in September, the week before our diocesan convention. Um, the United Thank Offering is an outreach of the Episcopal Church Women, which covers the whole globe, and they send the money that we raise, the, the change, whether it jingles or folds, that you put into your box, that money goes to help uh, areas of our world that are in need, including right here in our own backyard of the Diocese of South Dakota. So I do hope that you will be generous. If you did not get a box last week, we have some, we ordered more, we can get those today. If you have a box and it's already chocked full and you want a second box, please pick one of those up too. Capish? We're taking a little bit of a break right now. <laughs> The Lucianos, the, the Italians like that, capisce? 
The, so we're taking a little bit of a break for the rest of the summer on the adult ed forums. Um, we'll have some interesting adult ed forums that we're in the process of planning for the fall, so pay attention to the bulletin for that. Next Sunday, however, between the services at 9.15, we are going to have a meeting of anyone who is interested in helping, participating, or encouraging our Sunday school program. Now, I got a little bit hot under the collar at the 8 o'clock crowd, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to watch myself here. But one of the things that we are finding out as we listen to the focus groups is that everybody keeps saying the same thing. Emmanuel needs a strong Sunday school program. Well, guess what? We can't have a strong Sunday school program until the adults get up volunteer, and participate. It's not just going to, amen, whoever said that, put that, I'll get the sign-up sheet right here. No, no, I'm serious. We have a curriculum which is very easy to use. We also have a system whereby it doesn't have to fall on the same person over and over again. Catherine Riggs has done an incredible job over the last three years of really keeping our Sunday school program going. Our Sunday school program is alive and it is thriving. We have a lot of young kids, and we want to educate those young kids. But we can't do it if people sit on their duff and don't get up and participate. One of the reasons that young families leave Emmanuel and go to other churches in the community is because of the children's programming they have at the other churches. Well, guess what? We're a good church. We're a strong church, and we have a lot of young people in our church. But by golly, we are not going to lose our Sunday school program because we're waiting for the next person to sign up. Capiche? Okay. I'm getting a sense from the back that I might ought to stop. So I'll leave it there. But it's really important. Next Sunday, 9.15 a.m., if we get enough people who can volunteer for Sunday school, the same person doesn't have to do it every week. We can all take turns, and we can build this church into an incredible, incredible children's programming kind of church. Now, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
applauded Steve Branch about an hour ago. Steve found out that um, Teresa Aldrich, who was supposed to sing, is sick today and wasn't able to join us. And so Steve stepped up at the last minute and did that kind of music. Thank you, Steve, so very much. And thank you for the accompaniment. presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end. We ask, Lord God, that you instill and infuse in Michael a sense of your peace and your comfort. Continue to grant him wisdom. Relieve him of the burden of his stresses and allow him to taste that victory of life which is yours. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Who has a birthday? Tomorrow's your birthday, and how old are you going to be? 18? Holy cow. Oh, not, oh no, 8, not 18. I'm sorry. I, I, I must have missed her. Well, let's pray for our young Bruce. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up when he falls. And in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. You're welcome. Fractured wrist. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Heavenly Father, you sent your disciples out two by two so that they could be support to one another. And so, Heavenly Father, grant your beloved daughter the patience to receive the help and assistance of those friends and disciples who support and encourage her. Heal her wrist make her whole, and offer her the peace which only comes from you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, you saw it fit for us to enter the world through the gift of families. And so when one member of the family hurts, we all hurt. And so, Father, we ask that you, that you bless Mark in his injury, that you heal him and make him whole, and that you bless all those who are traveling to be with him, to offer love, peace, and comfort. We beg of you, Heavenly Father, to hear our prayer to be swift in answering us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And what was your uncle that broke his back? What's his name? And what was the uncle that passed away? Yeah. Lord God, the heart of a young child comes to you. You, Heavenly Father, prayers not for herself, but for two uncles, one seriously injured 
and one who we believe and trust has entered into the light of your love for all eternity. We ask, Lord God, that you hear Jacob's prayer, instill in her a sense of your presence so that she may know that you are a good father who hears and answers all prayers and who never leaves her side. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. What is his first name? Job. And that's in Arkansas? Yes. Yeah. Heavenly Father, you created us for one reason alone, that we might be reunited with you. So now that you have called Job home, Lord God, we ask that you open wide your heavenly gates. We ask, Lord God, that you receive the soul that you created and fashioned with your own hands, and that he may enjoy the light of eternity and peace forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Which anniversary? 22. Wonderful. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is, re is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me of my sins. I never saw that before either. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for bringing your petitions to our altar. I ask the rest of you to uplift these brothers and sisters of ours in prayer. We continue with the great prayer of thanksgiving in the Red Book of Common Prayer. You may follow along, beginning on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. One of the many great joys of the Episcopal faith is that all baptized Christians, regardless of denomination, are welcomed and encouraged and invited to receive Holy Communion alongside us today as one family of faith. If you prefer a blessing, you may come forward and fold your arms. I'll be honored to pray with you and for you. We also have gluten-free hosts available. If that's part of your need, please let me know when I get to you.
name of the people of Emmanuel, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. post-communion prayer is on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the final blessing, a reminder that our closing hymn can be found, the number is found in the bulletin, not on the board up here. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, grant you peace, and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.